Christ. Jesus Christ took our place. If you're a human being and you can hear my voice, Jesus Christ took your place on the cross of Calvary. Every one of us was born under sin. Every one of us was born under the curse. But Jesus became a curse for you. He became a curse for me. He took your sin upon himself. And he dealt with it in the grave. He took that sin to the grave. He who knew no sin was made to be sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. So that we could stand before God on the day of judgment and every person will stand before God and the books will be opened. And every thought and every word and every deed will be made open. And you need an advocate. You need someone to cover you. Someone to take the penalty on your behalf. Jesus Christ did that. He did it for you. And he did it for me. And he's calling you today. He's calling you to repentance. What does that mean? To repent. Does it mean that you will do something about your sin? Does it mean that you will stop taking drugs? Does it mean that the pain that people have put on you will suddenly stop? That you will be, have something to do with that. You're able to do it. You would have done it by now, my friend. You would have escaped the pain. You would have escaped the torture of drug addiction. If you could have done something about it, if you could have saved yourself, you would have done so by now. But Jesus Christ came to this earth. He's done it all. He's done it once and for all. Every sin you've ever committed, every sin that you will commit in the future, He has it covered. But you have to do something. He's knocking at the door of people's lives today. He wants to come in. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free from drug addiction. He wants to set you free from the hurt that this world may have put on you. He wants to set you free from bitterness. If you have bitterness in your heart, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you are holding another person with that unforgiveness. God will set you free. God will release you. God will give you new life. But you have to do something. You have to come to Him. He will not beg you. He has given you free will. And you can go all the way to the pit of hell with that free will, but that is not the desire of God. He would not have sent His very own Son, His only begotten Son. He would not have sent Him to this earth to cover the penalty of sin if He didn't care, if He didn't love you, love you more than you love yourself. He wants to give you new life, but you have to open the door. You have to humble yourself. Pride will get in the way. Sin will separate you from God, but He has made a way through. He loves you. He cares for you. People of Redburn, if you're hurting today, come to Him. If you have the burden upon your life today, if there's a heavy weight of sin upon you, if it's pulling you down, if it's shaping your life, if it's causing you to react in a way that's not right, God will make it right. He will heal you. He will set you free. That's His promise. God promises. He's not a man that He would lie. God cannot lie. He promises that He will heal you. He will set you free. He will give you new life. Be bold today. If you want to live with your pain, you can. If you want to live with your addictions, you can. But He says, I will heal you. Come to me, all who are heavy laden. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. But you have to do something. He loves every human being. He died for every human being. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus Christ is your answer. He's your way through to everlasting life. How will you spend eternity? Have you asked yourself the question? Can you answer the question? Or will you burn an everlasting fire? That is not the will of God. Listen up, people of Redburn. This is the answer. This is the answer to your personal problems. This is the answer to drug addiction. This is the answer to immorality. This is the answer to things that you do that might be shameful. God, God will set you free. He loves you. He'll wrap his arms around you 
and care for you like nobody in this earth cares for you. Jesus will do it. He loves you, sir. He cares for you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to make you whole on the inside. relationship with you, wants to get to know you, wants you to get to know him, wants to save your soul on the day of judgment. You need an advocate. Every sin will be put up. You need someone to take the penalty for you. Jesus has done that. Listen up, people. He cares for you. He loves you, Redburn. People of Redburn, God loves you. God cares for you, lady. He wants a, he wants a relationship with you, sir. He wants to get to know you. Why, why do people not want to know the living God? It's, it's such a good relationship. It's such a good relationship you can have with God. Just open your heart. He's knocking. He's knocking at the door of your life. If you have to do something, you have to open your heart. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to get to know you. Everybody get down confess getting on my knees and pleading for you, I would do it, but that's not what it's like. It's nothing to do with it. It's got to be you. You've got to open the door. He's knocking. He's knocking at your door. He said, if you will open it, I will come in. I will stop with you. I will give you new life. But you have to do something. He'll take away drug addictions. He'll take away hurt that's been on your life. He'll give you new life. Why do people not want that? People do you want to live with your sin? Do you want to live with your pain? You don't have to. He'll set you free. He'll break the bonds of sin on your life. We sin so much, we think that's just how it is. We get used to it. We're like a frog sitting in the hot water and the water gets hotter and hotter. We don't even notice that the sin is building up in our lives. Then every time we sin, we build up the wrath of God for the day of judgment. But there's a way through. Jesus made the way through. He cares for you. He loves you. Don't despise him. He cares for you. He wants a relationship with you. If you will give your heart to Jesus Christ, your entire life will be different. Everything will be changed. Your life will be transformed at the moment. You're conforming to the world. You're being shaped by the world. Whatever you're feeding on. If you're feeding on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, whatever it is, short, YouTube shorts, whatever it is, whatever you're spending your time doing, that's what's feeding into your spirit. And it's shaping you. But there's a better way. God says, I will give you life. And life more abundantly. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't rely on your own truth. It's been corrupted. It's been polluted by this world. It's been shaped. You are being shaped. And you don't even know it. I'm here to tell you there's a better way. God will clean you up on the inside. He'll give you a new slate. A clean slate. He'll help you. He'll give you wisdom. An understanding of things. You won't be conformed to the world any longer. But you'll be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. You'll think differently. You'll have new desires on the inside. He loves every human being. He loves you sir. Wants a relationship with you. If you're a human being, he died for you so that you could be free. Open your heart to him. Don't be stubborn, people. Open your heart to the living God. He's here speaking to you today. The spirit of the living God is here today. He's touching people's lives. But you have to come to him. You have to open your heart to him. And he will come to you. He will draw near to you. Open your heart, people. God loves you so much. He's got you standing still at those lights so you can hear this message. You may never hear this message again. Life is short. Every time I click my fingers, people are dying. This is serious, people. I care about you so much. And I don't even know you. God loves you. Because he loves you, I love you. And I'm desperate to tell you the good news of the gospel and what that can do for your life. 
if you're happy with your life, take stock of it. Have a look at your life. Are you pleased? Really? God has a better way for you. God has a better life for you. God has new life for you. He'll make you new on the inside. He'll give you new life. He'll take those addictions off your life. He'll set you free. You'll never be the same again. Open your heart to him. He's crying out to people today because he cares. He cared enough to send his own son. Who would do that? Who would do that? Who would send their own son to this earth to die for people who scoff at him and people who swear at him and use his name as a swear word all the time? Nobody would do it, but he did it because he loves you. He cares for you. He cares what happens to you. People of Redburn, God loves you today. Just open your heart a little bit. A little bit for him and he will come in and set you free. You'll never be the same again. He loves you, wants a relationship with you. He wants to give you new life and new values in your life. A new code, a moral code that you can live by. He'll protect you and look after you. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. Hallelujah. 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 People are so complicated these days. They're so full of things that the world has taught them. But they can't see the truth of Jesus Christ. Everybody has created their own truth. Every person that I see in front of me has their own truth. But there is only one truth. And that is Jesus Christ. He loves you, sir. wants a relationship with you. He cares for you. wants to change your life. wants to make it better. Why do people despise God when he only wants to make your life better? and give you the love that you may never have got as a child. Many people have been hurt. They've been hurt by their parents. They've been hurt by their fathers. But God is a loving Father. He'll never hurt you. He'll never harm you. He'll always protect you. He'll always forgive you. He'll set you free from drug addiction. He'll set you free from sin. You'll no longer be separated from the God of this universe. He died for every person. He condemns nobody. He judges nobody. He loves you. You're a human being. God, by His Son, died for you so you could be free. And He'll give you new desires on the inside. A new way of thinking, a new way of living. Your eyes of your understanding will be opened. And you will see. You will see things differently. You will see things as God sees them. We can only see things out of what we fed into ourselves how we've been formed, how we've been shaped. What are you looking at? What are you looking at, people of Redburn? What are you feeding on? What are you feeding your spirit on? What are you feeding your mind on? If you're feeding your mind on garbage, it's garbage in, garbage out. You can't expect anything else. But God, when you come to know Him, when your heart is made new before Him, and He starts to renew your mind, you start to see things differently. Don't you want to be healed, people? Don't you want to be set free? Life is so short. Every one of us, in a hundred years, nobody that I'm looking at now will be on this earth. Nobody. We'll be all gone. I'll be gone. But I know where I'm going. I know that when I stand before God, and every sin, and the books are open, every sin, everything I've ever done will be made open. But by Jesus, my Saviour, I am not ashamed of the Gospel. My Saviour will say, I know this man, this man, I know him. I've taken the penalty for him. I took the curse for him. Come into the heaven, come into heaven, be with God. But if you don't know him, you will have an eternal life separated from God. Think about it, people. You've got to think about it. I'm urging you to think today. People don't think, they just let life. Pass them by. Just let life. It's expiring like air out of a balloon. It's just disappearing. Our life is disappearing. And one day, we'll be on death's door. Don't leave it till then, people. You don't know when you're going to die. God knows when you're going to die. There are people here who are going to die. Maybe today. We don't know. But God is not here talking to you today. Maybe you. He's crying out to you today. He's saying, me. I will give you rest. I love you. Listen to him. He cares what happens to you today, sir. Every one of you. You might not even care for yourself. 
some people have got to the point that there's so much hurt in their life, they don't care for themselves. Some people even anticipate suicide. Don't do that. You can have new lives. He'll heal you. He'll set you free. God is a good God. Why do people despise Him? Why do people ignore Him? Why do people turn their face away when God is crying out to you? He's knocking at your door, people. Open the door. Give Him a chance. You will never be the same again. He loves you. He cares for you. Let Him care for you. Let Him wrap His arms around you and heal you. Give you a new start. People are so full of themselves, they think, I'm okay. It's because you don't know. The God will reveal to you just what's happening. Come on, people. People of Redburn, God cares for you. He loves you. What's a relationship with you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Person, every human being, we did not deserve what Jesus Christ has done for us. We did not deserve the mercy that he extended toward us. He loved us so much. Jesus was in heaven. He knew no sin. He knew no sin. But he took the sin of the world. He took your sin and my sin upon himself. People just stop at that. They walk past. They say, so what? So what if Jesus Christ took my sin? What does that mean to me? It means everything, my friend, because on the day of judgment, every one of us, the books will be open and every one of us, every sin, every thought, every word that we have spoken will be made open and will be judged. And you need an advocate. Jesus Christ paid the penalty, took your sin upon himself, took my sin, so that we could be free, so that we, could be in the presence of God. But if you do not know Jesus, you will live eternally in separation from God. You may not understand that now. That's why we're here telling you, because we care. The Bible says that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Are you perishing today? Do you think what I'm saying is foolish? If you think what I'm saying is foolish, you're perishing. But that is not the will of God. He does not desire that any person should perish. If you're a human being, he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to get to know you and care for you. He wants to wrap his loving arms around you. Jesus died for us. He died for you. Take stock of your life, people. Have a look at yourself. What have you been feeding on? Think about it. Whatever you've been feeding on, that's what shapes you. If you've been just looking at YouTube shorts, if you spend your life looking at your phone. Praise God. Just you spend your life just looking at your phone and just feeding on those things. Those things will shape you. Those things will cause you to conform to the world. Do not conform to this world. It will not give you peace. It will not give you joy. Many people are hurting. Many people need a relationship with Jesus. He will set you free. He will give you peace. He will take off those addictions of your life. Be transformed, the Bible says. He will change the way you're thinking. Your mind will be renewed. You'll have understanding. He loves you so much today. Cares for you. Cares for you enough to have me out here telling you the good news. But you have to listen. You have to do something. I can only tell you, and I'm telling you because I care for you, and I don't even know you. I don't know any person here. But God knows you, and God cares for you, and God loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. Take it and read it. He wants a relationship with you. Once you know the Lord Jesus Christ, once you're born of his spirit, do not despise him. He loves you, he cares for you, he wants a relationship with you. Look at my eyes, look. He wants to get to know you and he wants to... You don't think you need God, but open your heart a little bit to him. Give him the chance. He cares for you. He wants to set people free here today. Jesus Christ will set you free today, but you have to let him. Look at your life. Are you happy with the way things are going? Are you happy? Is anybody in pain here today? Is anybody in bondage here today to addictions? What are you a slave to? 
What are you a slave to? Look at your own life. Take stock of your life. I'm here to tell you that when you know Jesus Christ, everything changes. Everything changes. Do you want to keep your pain? Do you want to keep your bondage? Do you want to keep thinking the way you're thinking? Are you happy? And it's not about happiness. Happiness depends on something has to happen. But it comes and goes. It's, it's fragile. You need the joy of the Lord. When you have the joy of the Lord, it stays with you. In the middle of the chaos, you can know joy. You can know peace. Open your heart to the Lord Jesus. He's appealing to you today. He cares for every person. He wants a relationship with you, sir. He wants to get to know you. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here telling people the good news of the gospel. There's a place for every person. Jesus is no discriminator of people. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you've done. You might say, my sin is too great. I can't come to God. I'm full of shame. My sin has made me feel shameful, guilty. Every day I get up, I feel guilty. This is some people's life. But you don't have to have that life. There's a free life. There's a new life. And it's available. And it's free. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. There's nothing you can do but surrender to Him. Humble yourself, the Bible says. Don't let pride get in the way. Don't let sin separate you from God. He'll take those addictions off your life. He'll set you free from those. You'll be able to walk in the newness of life. Everything will be different. You must give Him a chance. Please don't scoff at God. He loves you and cares for you. Enough for me to be telling you today. Come to Him. If you're heavy laden, if you have a weight of sin upon your life, if you have a weight of bondage, if you have addictions, if you can't help doing things, you want to stop, but you can't stop, God will do that. He will fix you. He will take those addictions away. So many testimonies of people who have been delivered of addictions. Your life can be better. Are you happy with your life the way it is? Where will you spend eternity? You must, you must ask yourself the question. And you must have an answer. An answer that is lasting. An answer that is true. Where will you spend eternity? God cares for you, man. He loves you very much. You've got to do something. People, I appeal to you, please, open your heart just a little bit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your life will be so much better, sir. Yes, he loves you. God bless you too. And God bless you, sir. God cares. Every human being. If you're a human being here today, God loves you. God cares for you. He sent his son for you. Why would he do that? Why would God, the God of this universe, he didn't have to. He did, Jesus did not have to leave his throne in glory and come to this world. He didn't have to go through a horrible death. He didn't have to take the penalty of sin upon himself. But he did. And he did it for you. And you don't know that, but I'm telling you that's what it is. And he, people think they don't need God, but he loves you today. Young lady, he loves you. He cares for you. Hallelujah. Every human being, God knows you. He's numbered every hair on your head. He knows exactly all the things inside you. Take it and read it, sir. Open your heart to him. Open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He cares for you. When no one else will care for you, He cares for you. And He will protect you. He will give you a moral code to live by. God loves you. God loves you, sir. He cares for you. You're not alone, because God cares for you. A lot of people think that there's, there's no way. They're full of despair. They have no hope. But Jesus is your hope. Jesus is the one. He will give you new life. Everything will be different. He'll make you new on the inside. You'll no longer be in bondage. I appeal to you people to take stock of your life. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity, sir? Do you know? Can you answer? People say they'll just go to the dust. That's not true. You're a spirit. Jeremiah 1.5 says it. 
when he knit you together in your mother's womb, he knew you. How did he know you? You weren't even a person. He knew you. He knew you because you're a spirit and your spirit will live forever. Give your heart to him, sir. He cares for you. I can see you listening. I can see you listening, sir. Jesus Christ loves you, wants a relationship with you. God bless you. God bless you today. God, by his spirit, will set you free. Do you want to be set free today or do you want to remain in your bondage? And you might say, am I in bondage? You tell me. What is running your life? What do you think about first thing in the morning when you open your eyes? Is it weed? You think about weed? Drugs? What is it? How do you know that answer to that question? When you're born of the Spirit of God, the first thing you think about is your relationship with the God of this universe. And He will bless you that all the day long. You have to let Him know. He'll take away those things. Really and truly, do you want to continue in bondage? Do you want to continue with your life as it is? You might say I'm happy. You might be deceiving yourself. Think about it, people. Think deeply. Look inside yourself. God cares so much about you that he wants a relationship with you, sir. He wants to get to know you. There's no one like our God. There's no one can love you like our God. But you have to let him. He will not beg you. God will not beg you to repent. But he calls you to repent today, people of Redburn. He's calling you to repent. What does that mean? That you're going to be able to fix your own sin, you're never going to be able to sin again. You're going to turn away from all those things that are hurting you. It means that. But if you could have done that by now, you would have done it already. But we all need a saviour. Jesus is your saviour. He will empower you to take away those things off your life. To have victory over them. There's only one saviour. And his name is Jesus Christ. There's not two saviours. We can't help ourselves or we would have done it by now. So give him a chance. Open your heart to him today. If you are really in need, if you want to keep your sin, I can't help you. If you want to keep your pain, I can't help you. If you want to keep your addictions, I can't help you. But if you really want to be free, there is an answer. And that answer is Jesus Christ. He's a miracle working God. He's a God of deliverance. He's a healer. He's the one that can make your life different. Nobody else. God loves you, sir. He cares for you. Wants a relationship. You scoff, but he loves you. Even so. Many mocked Jesus on the, when he went to the cross. They spat upon him. They pulled his beard. They did terrible things. They whipped his back. But he still loved human, humankind, mankind. He, he stayed the course. He didn't give up. At any time, he could have called on the angels to come and take him back to glory and he could have forgotten about mankind but he didn't he cares for you don't you even think about that sometimes you want to be free ask yourself the question do you want to be free free from what only you know that he'll set you free he'll give you a new life where we spend eternity what? one day we'll all stand there we'll all stand there every one of us the living and the dead. Everyone will stand before God. You two gentlemen over there will stand before God and so will I. And the books will be open. All your sin will be made open. If you do not have an advocate, if you do not have someone to carry the penalty for you, you will live eternity in separation from God. I'm here telling you that because I care for you and I don't even know you. He wants a relationship with you. People scoff and they say that's nothing. Believe me, it is everything. It is your eternal destiny at stake here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves you so much, people of Redford. People of Redford. He loves you. You're carrying a heavy load. You're carrying a sin load as well, my friend. He'll take that load off you. He'll give you peace. You'll be free when you come to Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, sir, on the bike over there. 
You don't want to hear it, but you need to hear it. He loves you, he cares for you, he wants a relationship with you. You're shaking your head. You want to remain in your sin? You want to stay in your sin? You want to be separated from God? He cares enough for me to be here telling you. Do not despise what he's saying. You don't know when your life's going to end. But Jesus knows. He knows. That's why he's got me here today. He's got me here talking to you. He's not changing those lights until you hear what he has to say to you, my friend. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to set you free. He wants to give you new life on the inside. And you don't think you need it. Think again, my friend. You will stand before God one day. You need an advocate. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You have heard the gospel. You know what the Bible says? Yeah, take a picture of it. Take it and listen to it again. You know what the Bible says? The preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Do you think I'm speaking foolishness, my friend? Then you're perishing. Think again. Think hard. He's still got you there. He's still holding you there. Keep listening. I hope you're taping all this. Listen to it later. When you put your head on your pillow tonight, think about what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you. He wants to come in. He's knocking on your door, sir. He wants you to come in, and you have to do something. You have to open your door. And if you will, he will come in. He will set you free. He will give you new life. You have heard the gospel, my friend. You have heard the gospel. Take it into yourself. Don't despise it. Don't ignore it. God loves you. And he can run faster than you, my friend. God bless you. Can't outrun God. God bless you. Redburn, the spirit of the living God is here today. And we take authority over the spirit of wickedness in this place. We bind it, we break it, we tear it down in Jesus' name. And every person will be able to see. The scales will drop from your eyes. That is my prayer. And you will be able to hear and see what is being said here. And your eternal salvation is at stake. This is not for me. This is for you. God cares about you, young lady over there, vaping. I can see you at the other side there. God cares for you and loves you. Wants a relationship with you. He will set you free. He will protect you. He will wrap his loving arms around you and you will know protection and you will know love like you've never known a loving father. He cares for every person. He cares for this lady coming along here. Look at her. Beautiful hair. Absolutely beautiful. God loves you. What's a relationship with you? Just let him in. Give him a chance. He loves every human being. He did not come to condemn. He came to save. Why are people so resistant to a, a loving God? There's no one like our God. No one can love like our God. You might have experienced some human love. It's nothing compared with the infinite love of the creator of this universe. He cared so much that he sent his son. Who would do that? Maybe a woman, a mother, might die for her son. Maybe. A child. But would you die for your enemy? Would you die for someone who's first you and sworn at you and use your name as a four-letter word thousands of times? Would you die for that person? No. But Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ died for you because he cares for you. If you're a human being, if you're breathing at the moment, if your heart is beating, Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ cares for you. He wants a relationship with you, sir. Listen to him. He's talking to you. People, I'm appealing to you. Open your ears. Open your heart. God wants to set you free today. People just walk by, but he cares for you. He'll take all that hurt off your life. He'll give you new life. He cares. He loves you. Hallelujah. Young people, old people, it doesn't matter. We don't know when our number is up, as they say. We don't know when we're going to die. Every time I clip my fingers, people are dying. All ages are dying. Thousands of people. You must know where you're going to spend eternity. Time is short. We really don't know. But God knows. And he said, 
but for me to come here today and speak to you, you're being spoken to with a message from God. And that message is called the gospel. It's called the good news. And it's for every person and it's, it is good news because it saves your soul eternally. Thank you for taking it, sir. Have a good read of that. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. Every relationship you have from now on will be better once you know the Lord Jesus Christ. He's got another load. You take that sin off your life too. He'll set you free, man. He'll, he'll, your burden will be light if you know the Lord Jesus. God loves you today. He wants a relationship with you. Get to know him. Get to know him, sir. Hallelujah. 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 We praise our God because we know of his goodness. You can know of his goodness too. You can know of his mercy. You can know of his love. You can know of his deliverance today. Hey, think, and listen, God loves you. Look at me. Look. No, you're not listening. Okay, that's fine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come back. Come back. Look. Hey, look at me. Look. God loves you. Yes, he does. He cares, he cares for you. He wants a relationship with you. Open the door for him. Let him in. These two men walking along here. I'm telling you today, guys, God loves you. God loves you. I know you say you're right, but God loves you. Take stock of your life. He'll lift all that sin off your life and he'll set you free. Come on. Come on. Come on. Young people, God loves you. God loves you. God cares for you. Come on. Think about it. Have a read. You're not despised of the people. Why are you so scared? Why are you so afraid of what a loving God wants to do for you in your life? He'll improve your life. He'll give you such a sense of well-being inside yourself. He cares for you. He'll take all the sin off your life. Hallelujah. 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 Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. You were so holy. He knew no sin, but he came to this earth. And he did it for you, sir. He cares for you. He who knew no sin was made to be sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. There was a divine exchange that took place. All our sin for all his righteousness. All our sin for all his righteousness. Every person has sin on their life. God will take that sin from your life. He'll take it upon himself and you will have new life. People, God bless you. You know God loves you. You know he cares for you. God, yes, but God loves you more. And he wants a relationship with you. He wants to set you free. You might think you're free, but he will make you totally free. He'll give you new desires on the inside. He'll take those addictions off your life. Your life will be better. Once you have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. What do we need saving from? You can start with being saved from yourself. From the things that are on your life. God cares for you, sir. God cares for every person. This delightful young couple here. He loves you. Your relationship will be better if you know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now there's a happy face. There hasn't been many happy faces, but there's a happy face. You must have the joy of the Lord. Maybe not. God loves you. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Young man, God loves you. Wants a Look at me. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to get... No, no. Don't score. I'm busy, mate. You've got to go to work. Okay. God loves you. Remember that. Remember that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus.
I was battling with a lot of addictions. I was caught up in the world, gambling, drugs, neglected, childhood abuse, very, very lost. No, no, nothing could fill it. I tried alcohol, I tried drugs, I tried gambling, I tried sleeping around. Nothing could fill the pain that was inside of me. Money, nothing could fill it. And when I, I almost died, I decided to give my life to God. So I started to go to church. And then I was welcomed in by non-judgmental people that were all loving and caring and helping. And I didn't feel judged. I started to finally feel accepted. And the pe pe people weren't out to get me or out to get anything from me. Yeah. And that's changed my life for the better. And it's built me up where I finally started to try to walk in the right direction and do what's right. And read encouraging words every day. Stop hanging around all the old toxic people that I used to be around with. And my life's gotten a lot better. Much, much better. Yep, God bless you. Yep, God bless. I was battling with pokies for years. I put in about 300 plus grand of my money in those things. And I finally started to go to Gambling Anonymous and thought I have to get out of this. This is ruining my life. Ruining my life. So I started going. Finally I've stopped playing them. Finally learning how to try and budget my money and do what's right. The world is becoming so much more wicked as, as the time goes on. God and his original laws and the way mankind were meant to be haven't changed from his perspective from the beginning. The, the way people want to live now and live in sin, and do whatever they want, crime rates becoming the norm, suicides becoming the norm, mental health becoming the norm, Alcohol consumption's increasing, drug addiction's increasing, things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's a way out of all that rut, all yes. that mess, all that wickedness that's just getting shown to kids now on screens. Young kids are getting brainwashed, showing the most craziest things at young ages. R18 has gone out the window. Kids have access now to porn pornographic sites online to drop of a hat, to watch anything they want that back in the day, R18, you were not allowed to watch. That's why lawlessness is increasing. Things are getting worse. But there's a way out of it. And that's to come to God. Get your mind back to the Bible. Try to live according to His ways. Surround yourself with people that are fruitful, that are all trying to walk in that direction. Then encourage each other to be on the right path. All the temporary pleasures, don't, don't fill the gap. I've had it all. I used to work in the mines. I've had thousands of dollars, girls, drugs. Nothing could fill it. Nothing could fill it. When I finally found acceptance and love from God, and was welcomed into the church, I finally started to fill that void and that gap that was missing. I didn't need all that money. I didn't need all those girls. I didn't need all that sex. I didn't need all those drugs. I didn't need all that stuff. When I finally found acceptance, real love, and a relationship with God that would help keep me on track, I finally found peace, inner peace, which is so much better than being under the pump, stressed out in torment, living in fear. I start. I finally start to build up on faith, encouragement, walking in the right direction, and finding that is so much better than what you got on the outside. You, you can have it all on the outside. You can have money, you can have possessions, you can have materials. But if you're living in constant fear, uncertainty, torment, all that other stuff on the outside doesn't compare to what's on the inside. 
look at what the look, look at what the coronavirus has done to people. It increased mental health rate through the roof. As people were sitting inside, living in fear, uncertainty, getting so tormented in the head. So tormented in the head. And that, that has ruined a lot of people. That's why it's so good when you can get out of all the rut that's been shown on screens these days and get your mind around good things. Good things. Get your mind into the Bible. Get your mind into encouragement. Your mind into love. Surround yourself with people that don't have to get anything from you. That genuinely want to help. As God says, do unto others as you'll have them do unto you. Don't judge others or you'll be judged. Blessed is the man who gives. We're not out here to get anything in return. We don't want your money. We're not out here to, 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 to get paid for this. We're out here because we genuinely want to see other people find this for themselves. As I said, I was once I was once lost in the world and I only found God nine years ago. So I can relate to a lot of people that have heavy addictions with drugs, alcohol, crime, whatever it can be. Porn, porn, uh, porn, sex addictions, one night stands, nothing fills the gap. You wake up Monday and it's all out the window and you're back to square one. It's so much better when you find real meaning, real purpose, real words to keep you on track with the reality of real life. That is so much better than what you have on the outside. If you ever see, it doesn't matter what you've got on the outside, it matters what's on the inside. And when you receive God, you receive the Holy Spirit, which is our helper to help guide us, comfort us, and speak the good words to us that can encourage us and lift us up through the hard times in life. For a good example, it doesn't matter what you've got on the outside. You can see the richest people, they might have everything on the outside, but underneath, they are so stressed out, they are so run down, they are living in so much fear, and you look at people in countries like Africa, they can be living outside in the dirt, with the biggest smiles on their face, and have so much inner joy, that really don't care about what's on the outside. They've found, found love and purpose, and true love from God is so much better than, than the temporary things that this life can give you. So I, I, encourage, I encourage all of you out there who are listening that there is, there is a way out. There is, there is a way out of this rat race that the world is becoming. To, to all the older people here who I'd say are about over 40, would understand what life was like back in the 90s, the 2000s, when all the technology wasn't around. People were outside more. People were taking things serious more. There was moral laws, there was values, there was respect. There was the way things were meant to be. But now all that's gone out the window. From what technology's done now, it's, it's, it's given people access for all, all, all the crime, all the things that can be shown on screens now, the drop of a hat. Phones shouldn't be called phones anymore, they should be called little computers that are brainwashing people with all the wicked things that are being able to sh be shown now to the younger generations. That's why, that's why the crime rate's going up through the roof, worldwide. Younger kids are carrying more knives, there's more robberies. There's more burglaries, there's more stabbings, there's more postcode wars, there's more, more crime that's increasing because young kids are getting shown all this stuff. Where back in the day, parents, parents wouldn't let their kids see this sort of stuff so they hit 18 and they were classed as an adult able to stand on their own two feet. But now all the younger generations have got access to it and that's why lawlessness is increasing worldwide. God, God says this in the Bible, this is going to happen. Lawlessness is going to continue to increase. The world is going to continue to get worse and worse and worse 
and there's going to be more suffering, more suffering until the point of destruction. It also says in the Bible, in Matthew, Jesus says that in the last days, nation will rise against nation and kingdom will rise against kingdom. So, World War III is not, is not far off the parts. With what's happening right now with all the tension with the West and Russia, Ukraine, China, all the tensions it's building up worldwide through power and greed, one day World War III will come into play. World War III will come into play. We, we, we weren't designed as human beings to live forever. We were designed one day to die, which we all will die one day. And we will stand in front of God who created us human beings and you'll be judged and you'll, give it, you'll take an account for the life you live here on earth. And you'll either be accepted into the kingdom of heaven if you, if you have repented of your sins and your wicked behaviour or you'll be separated from God and you'll go to a place which is called hell. And that's, that's not a fantasy. It's not, it's not uh, something that you see in a, in, a, in, a, in a fantasy horror movie. That's a real place. God, God hasn't changed since the beginning of time. But like I said, mankind has. So in God's ways that if people reject Jesus and reject his salvation, people will spend eternity in a place called hell. And the place called hell is where the suffering will never end for all eternity. People will burn in hell for the rest of their life, for all eternity. We've all fallen short. We all deserve punishment. We've all sinned. We've all done the wrong thing. Me personally, I've done the wrong thing many, many times and I still do. I try to keep on track. I try to do what's right, I try to do my best, and when I don't, and I continue to do the wrong thing, I just end up in more and more ruts. I end up in more and more problems. The more, the more, the more I want to go out there and do what's wrong, the more problems I'm going to have, and the more, the more bad things that are going to come in my life. But the more I repent, the more I turn away from all the wrong things, as the Lord says, reap, reap what you reap and sow yes. what you will get. So if you go out there and try to do what's good more, you're going to get the benefits. If you, if you continue to do what's wrong and stay in all the wickedness and pain, you'll continue to suffer, you'll continue to have torment, you'll continue to have more and more problems as time goes on. Do you want to preach a little bit? You can do that. As I said, lawlessness yeah. is becoming the norm now. People are doing more crime, getting out on bail, getting out. Young kids are stabbing people, getting straight out on bail. Things are getting worse and worse and worse. Back in our ancestors' time and, and back in generations in the past, if you stole one loaf of bread, you would get stoned to death. That's how serious people took the laws and how serious humanity was trying to do what's right. But now it's just the norm. It's becoming more and more the norm. That's why, that's why the alcohol consumption is going up, because people are suffering more. The drug addictions are going up more, because people are addicted to more drugs. People are looking for a way out. People are looking for a way out. They're trying to escape reality. That's why most people you see these days, most people you see these days walk around with headphones on because they don't want to live in reality anymore. It's too, it's too confronting because of what, of what the digital world's done. It's brainwashed people more and more to live in a digital world that's not real. So in reality, people are living in their heads they're staring at screens all day and they're not living in the moment. And the things that are getting shown on screens 
people have become blinded and easily deceived. And they're, 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 they're unaware that they're being brainwashed by so much evil, wicked things that are being shown on screens now. And it's affecting people. It's affecting people more and more and more. But as I said, there's, there's a way out from all what's happening. As you've seen, like I said before, about the coronavirus, what the, what the news did to people, it messed people up so much in the head. They were sitting indoors, watching the news all day about if you catch coronavirus, you're going to drop dead. If, if this happens, you're going to drop dead. And it affects people's mental health through the roof. So the alcohol consumption rose through the roof. Drug addiction rose through the roof. Suicide rose through the roof. The mental health wards were getting booked up. Jail cells were getting more fuller. People weren't being able to cope anymore with life. That's why it's so good when you can get your mind, as Paul says in the Bible, renew your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can get out. And you can do, you can do the will of God. You, you can set your mind on the things above. Dwell on the things that are right. Get your mind in the Bible. And you, you'll, you'll see for yourself how wicked and how lost and how broken everything around us is getting. Because of the fall of mankind, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's just going to continue to get worse and worse. But if you're able to plant yourself in a church, you're able to plant yourself around people that are encouraging, set your mind on good things of the Bible, you will find peace. You will find joy. You will find love. You will find patience. You will find kindness. You will find righteousness. You will seek all those things from above that will come into your life. And you won't be so easily deceived by what the media is showing these days. Or what screens are showing these days. You'll be able to get your mind out of all the rut. All the wickedness that's just messing people up left, right and centre. And get it on all the good things. And your life will change. So how, how, how you can have this in your life. Your first step is to realise that you're a sinner. Not, not here to judge anybody. I'm a sinner myself. I fall short. I'm not perfect. I've got all my problems just like everybody else. When you recognise you're a sinner, and you recognise that you need God's help, you can repent. You can ask God to come in your life, and you want to live, try to live according to His ways. And you can start to get your mind out of all the wickedness that's going on around you. You get your mind on the things above. And the Lord, the Lord will transform your life. I, I didn't, I didn't mention one thing about gay people, mate. I, I, I did, I didn't mention one thing about girls.